Hi, my name's Sue Ellum and I'm a tarot reader and have been for about 25 years now. And um, I use the mythic tarot, which is based on Greek mythology. Hi, I'm Carrie Bellino and I love collaborating with Sue Ellum. Um, we're having so much fun doing this. I am an intuitive Reiki master teacher and a spiritual life coach. And I've got questions that um, we hope can help move humanity forward in the evolution of the times we are in right now. So teaching me a few things as well. <laughs> well, this goes along a little bit with yesterday's um, yesterday's message. So we'll see if there's any compatibility that pops up. What if our decisions hurt others, but they, but we know they are right for us? Okay. It's a million dollar question, isn't there? Yep. What if our decisions hurt others, but we know they are right for us? Okay. I guess we could say hurt or disappoint in the case of a, you know, a job or something. I'd say the first few cards, they, it, it, they feel heavy. This is a difficult, difficult one. We've got to be prepared to walk away from things that aren't working for us. So, and prepared, be prepared to start again if necessary. So we are, we are here on this planet. We each have a unique, um, purpose. Nobody is the same. Not one of us. Every one of us is unique. And people often don't understand why we do what we do. And as long as it's not a, something which is like mind altering, like addictions and things like that, it's a, it's a different ball game. But this is um, being prepared to walk away. If people are putting, say, guilt, which was the uh, yesterday's um, video. If people are putting guilt on you to make you fall in with their plans for you, then whether it be friends, whether it be family, you have to be prepared to walk away. You've done everything you possibly can in that scenario and there's nothing there left for you. And if you walk away and you do your own thing and it's successful and you're happy, Odds on that if people, if your family really love you, they will come around in the end and they will understand that this is something you had to do. It was your purpose. But if you don't walk away, then you end up with really battles on a material reality. It, this, this is where the heaviness comes in. Things not going right, not getting, not having enough money because you're not, because Ideally, you know, when you love what you do, the money comes. And if you're hating what you're doing, you're doing it for someone else, then there's a resentment, there's, there's a block, you block the energy, your energy is different, you don't, whatever it is, you don't do it to the best of your ability because you don't want to, you know, there's no fire in you for it. So life becomes very, very difficult if you live someone else's life rather than your own. And it takes a lot of courage. Um, I'm not discounting that, especially if it's family members, especially if it's very close, quite traditional families as well. There is a lot of confusion. You'll feel as though you're in a boat on the ocean, no oars. I mean, some people get, you know, for going on their own path, they get disowned. I mean, I'm not, I'm not minimizing this in the slightest, but it's, um, you know, it, and we can get into the, the, the thing of sexuality as well. I know some gay men who've been thrown out of their families, you know, um, or they can't, they're frightened to tell their families because they know that they will no longer have a family if they, you know, if they come out. And I know others that have come out and have been embraced and loved, you know. So this is, so it, it is a really, really heavy subject. Um, it's not just about, you know, somebody wanting you to wear a pink dress and you want to wear a blue one. You know, it's nothing. It, it's, this is, goes to the, the whole root of humanity and oppression 
and prejudice. Um, it's, it's a really heavy subject and there's a lot of confusion. And for a while, especially if you've had to come away, walk away from your friends and your family, there will be a period of confusion where you don't know where you're going. Did I make a mistake? Should I have just conformed? Should I have fitted in and just become the son or daughter or mother or father that they wanted? Uh, you know, should I have just put my, am I being selfish about putting my, my own needs first? Um, maybe, because maybe we've got parents that, that put their own, their, their children first and, and kind of walked away from their dreams. And therefore, there's a kind of a, a pressure on us to do the same because our parents did it. So therefore, we should do it. We should sacrifice our, ourselves on the altar of conformity. Um, but if we decide to walk away, we can find passion. It's like we love what we do or we love the person. Maybe it can be a scenario of of kind of marrying some, wanting to marry somebody of a different race, a different color, a different, you know, religion. Um, but we find, we find love and passion um, and we can't wait for each day to begin because we love the life we live. And, and we eventually, um, we can do without the people that are trying to oppress us. And it's hard to say, especially when it's family, but the more time you're away from oppression, the more you grow and you, you start to fly and you no longer think about it. It's, it, it's like, um, as long as you don't take on guilt, of course. And money and resources will start coming your way because you will, you won't be, you'll be doing things you love with people you love and you will get supported for that. You won't get supported if you're doing something for other people that they want you to do because that's not your passion. Uh, we all need to, to, to live with passion and nothing less. Um, so many people have accepted second best in their lives and even third, third and fourth best. You know, you, you can't live a fulfilled and, um, and wonderful life if you don't expect the best for yourself and the people you, um, the, the people that you care about. And also on, on the flip side, you know, if it is family pressure or friend pressure to get you to do what they want you to do, you're going to, you're also, they're not getting the best of you and you're going to end up resenting them, maybe even hating them. Your, your relationship's going to be broken anyway. You're not going to be open with them because as you can't tell them, you can't talk to them from the depth of your heart because you know the depth of your heart isn't acceptable. So it, it's, a, it's, a broken, it's going to be a broken relationship anyway. So why not just do what makes you happy, what, what, where your, your intuition is guiding you in, and showing you what direction you need to go in. And then if the love is strong enough, they will come round. They will be happy to see you happy. They will understand you made a choice, a, a new choice. And in this day and age, life, there's so much more opportunity out there than maybe when they were younger or, or maybe your grandparents. You know, there is so much out there if you follow what you need to do. And it's not being selfish. It's following your, your life purpose. And it's like, do I stay with what I have or put my energies into to something else? Because sometimes kind of being in a family and being in a friend with a group of friends can feel quite comfortable. You know, it, you know, they, they see you in a certain way and, and it's kind of ordinary, it's, it's, it's everyday life and it, not everything is bad about it. And you're thinking, well, I, I've, I'll miss this and I'll miss that. But it's it's your choice to make. Do I go for something better, something that will fulfill me, or do I stay with with what I have? And so it's a personal choice. My advice: follow your heart, and the people that really love you will come around and they'll understand. And the people who just want to control you will never understand. Um, and your life will basically 
be theirs to live. Um, this is something I feel quite strongly about. One of my, my, the main word for me, I think people quite often have a main word, my word is freedom. And this, so this really, this is something that I feel very strongly about. We have to do what we, we love. And then the people understand if they, if they want to. That's the, those are the cards. Well, it's kind of like cleaning out the closet. If you uh, don't make room for with, with the people that are no longer serving you or the people serving, and I don't mean servant wise, I, the, the energetically, um, and you, you'll, you won't attract the new people who are waiting for that new kind of energy to connect with you. So you are denying yourself a who knows, a whole host of people in your lives your life who will be of um, great support and passion and joy. So um, that's a great note to close on, Sue. Um, so I really, I, I like to ask my clients the deathbed question. And I always preface it by saying, this does not mean I'm predicting that you are dying. But when you are on your deathbed, what are you going to look back on with pride, with love? It's going to be the people that you spent your time with. It isn't going to be the disappointments. So let's say um, in this moment, you have decided that you are moving forward out of the job and you know that you're going to disappoint your coworkers or your boss and you don't want to be the cause of that disappointment. However, you know that this is something you must do. I can pretty surely guarantee you that when you're on your deathbed, you are not going to be thinking, geez, I wish I hadn't disappointed Dave when I took that new job. It is just not going to be something you're gonna look back on. Um, of what's important to you. What's going to be important to you is the people that are surrounding you, people that you've surrounded and spent most of your time with and how much love and joy and, and passion that you've had. That's what you're going to recall. So it's very important to know, to remember that you're going to move through this moment of disappointment or hurt. You're also going to be setting a ripple effect. Every time you move forward with what your heart is telling you to do, you allow the stage to be set for others to grab onto that courage, to grab onto that momentum. Now, if you post it, if you're uh, verbally social media savvy and you post this courage, then you're going to obviously affect a whole lot more people. But even if you don't, even if you're very, very private about it, and it just affects you and your immediate family, that energy, we are all connected. We're all running off that same energy source. That energy will affect others to allow them to have the strength to move forward as well. So think of it as a, a favor to humanity when you step into this courage and this power. And I want to say that I really, I wanna, I wanna leave, leave you with this. Sue said, sacrifice on the altar of conformity. That we, don't, we no longer have to sacrifice on the altar of conformity. And I'm going to leave you with, look where that's gotten us so far. Look where that conformity has gotten us. Look at where we are historically at this point in society with conformity. It uh, hasn't worked. So um, it's time to birth the new. And we're here to cheer you on as you step into that courage. So if you feel the need to reach out to either one of us, our contact information is on both of our sites. Please um, reach out to us and, and ask for a session or support because we want you to be the best you can be. And by all means, subscribe and share this um, message with others if it resonates with you. Thank you. And it's, um, yeah. I think it's all been said, hasn't it? Yeah. Okay, thank you very much yeah, indeed well for joining us, and it's bye from me. Thank you. See you tomorrow.